Star Wars Squadrons was just released on several platforms with an MSRP of $40 compared to the usual $60 for a new game. So how does that pan out? Welcome to Exasperated Nerd Explains and this is my Star Wars Squadrons review. I'm going to start with the story mode since it is Star Wars and I imagine a lot of players aren't there just because of the aerial combat, but because they are fans of the Star Wars universe as well. Your first two missions are a prologue set right after Aldran is destroyed where an Imperial pilot betrays his squad and switches to the Rebel forces. There is a time jump before the rest of the missions, which take place after the Battle of Endor and the establishment of the New Republic. You bounce back and forth playing as a pilot for both sides of the conflict. The only characters I'm aware of that are previously established in Star Wars that show up here are Wedge Antilles briefly and Hera Syndulla. One thing I do appreciate is that the storyline of Titan Squad for the Empire does not fall into the trap of having the quote unquote bad guys realize they are doing something wrong and betray their forces at the end of the story. This always seems to happen lately when you play as baddies. Are we the baddies? In a briefing they straight up tell you to attack civilian transports and medical frigates to draw the attention of the New Republic and your squad leader gives you a might makes right speech. They don't pull any punches. The New Republic squad, Vanguard, and though it's kind of thin, each squad mate on both sides does have a defining characteristic or driving force. It keeps it simple, but after playing through the story mode, I could tell you at least one thing about each of them, which is better than you can say for other games. One thing that sticks out to me in my initial one word review of the game, diversity. But I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship. Look, I don't really care, but when they hit you over the head with it, it's hard not to notice. I started paying attention to it right away, and it just became kind of funny to me. It starts out with your default look for both pilots. You can customize the look of your character for both plot lines, and I have to say, for the story mode, this is absolutely pointless. You literally do not show up in any cinematics, you do not look in a mirror, the only time you see any of yourself is when you use your gloved hands to manipulate controls in your cockpit. But you do have a variety of heads to choose from, and you can also switch between male and female body type regardless of the head. Also, I legit figured there would be alien head choices for the Republic side, but there are not. They are unlockable in multiplayer, but they are not an option here, which makes no sense. The only thing that has any real weight within the game in customization is that you can choose a voice slash personality. And each one has an A and a B, with one clearly being voiced by a female and the other a male. So it can appear a little bit funny. Standing by. Get me in a cockpit. There have been worse ideas, I guess. When you are flying around, your character will say things based on this voice and basic personality you select here. But it's not an actual interaction. You just respond to a squad mate or say something to yourself. How dare you! But I'm certain that this choice has zero effect on what your squad says. But at least you can tell what you selected. The rest of your choices in customization have zero bearing on the game. They literally could just have you choose the voice and the gameplay would be exactly the same. The story is fairly predictable, but also well balanced, so it feels like you are winning when you accomplish your mission for either side. It should take you anywhere between 5 and 8 hours to finish the game depending on your skill level and if you try to do all the side objectives. One little fun note about diversity for the rest of the story mode, and I'll only bring it up because it was at the top of my mind. Apart from Wedge, there's only one white male character with a speaking role until the very end of the game. It doesn't really matter, but it's just something I ended up noticing. The game does do a decent job balancing the different craft between the Empire and Republic, each one having a standard fighter, a bomber, an interceptor, and a support class. There is a fair amount of options you manipulate as you battle. For instance, in an X-Wing, you can alter your shields to focus on the front or back, and adjust power settings to maximize speed, shields, or weapons. Ties have the same options, just without the shields. 
In the multiplayer, your customizable character does show up on the end screen, so it makes sense to have that custom ability there. And there are a variety of modes to choose from to keep the game interesting, from dogfighting to fleet battles. The respawn time in multiplayer battles is a little longer than most first-person shooters, but I think it makes sense to encourage working with your squad. If you have a 20 second advantage with one or two pilots waiting to respawn on the opposing team, you can really press that and get more kills if you work together. The aerial combat is fun and the dogfights can last a while since you have shields and can repair or get repairs in the combat arena. One thing that's interesting compared to most flight combat games is that you can full on stop in midair and just hover in place. Though I have less time in the multiplayer compared to the story mode so far, overall I'd say the gameplay feels well balanced here and is pretty fun. And for those wondering, the view of crashing or flying into new nebula and dying is pretty nice. There are some glitches I encountered that were annoying to deal with during my gameplay in the story mode. Um, well it says to follow. Yeah, I, I, I tried that too, and uh, I, I don't think you're going to get in that way, buddy. One glitch, a group of X-Wings was supposed to attack, and they just appeared and didn't move. I didn't mind that one too much, as it was easy pickings for me, until I got back to my squad and they were also just stuck in place, forcing me to restart the checkpoint. That was how I resolved most of these little glitches, restarting the checkpoint, or maybe even the mission. Although for one, my squad just kept leaving me and returning to the start of the map and just staying there. For that one I had to exit out of the story mode altogether because restarting it just made the same thing happen again and again. These are all minor annoyances but I do feel it speaks to my larger thoughts on the game. It is being sold for $40 and I think that's probably about what it's worth new. It does feel like they cut a lot of things out somewhere in the game's development. If you even watched the premiere reveal trailer from just a few months ago, it shows all these cinematics that look good and exciting. They have different camera angles and depth and things going on that are all completely absent from the game. Basically all the cinematics in the game are just a few seconds and usually just ships leaving or arriving somewhere. The footage in the trailer is really dynamic and they would be the best cinematics in the game hands down, but they're just gone. They even released a 7 minute short film starring the leader of the Titan Squadron, which I thought was really well done and would have been a fun thing to incorporate into the game, adding more depth to the character, but it's not in there either, in the events, referenced, or anything. In fact, several moments from the reveal trailer do not even have an in-game equivalent in the story. Like the missions that had these events were just completely pulled from the game. Oh, and in the reveal trailer, there are cinematics with one of your head choices for your customizable character. So at some point, the face choice probably did make a difference and appear throughout the story mode in the cinematics. I think some of this boils down to the VR aspect of the game. The entire game can be done in VR, and trust me, you can tell. I'm not sure if this influenced the changes to the cinematics or if that was part of a separate decision to scale down the game due to money or deadlines, but all your interactions feel pretty stilted with people just talking at you. If you haven't played any VR lately, they usually don't have you walk so you don't mimic it and physically walk into a wall or something, so you point at something and select it to move, basically teleporting. That's how you interact with people and go into the briefing room throughout the game. All in all, if this was a $60 game, I would say it's probably not worth it, but as a $40 game, there's a lot here to like. Plus, even though it is EA, I would like to encourage the release of larger games at lower prices if there's not as much there as a typical AAA title. If you like Star Wars and you like aerial combat in games, I think you'll like this and get some good playtime out of it. Thanks for watching, what did you think of the game? Are you going to get it now that you know more about it? Please like the video and share it, as well as subscribe to my channel. There's a fair amount of Star Wars content there. Thanks for watching. Bye.